What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Lions personnel staff. The Lions have finalized their personnel staff for this season. There's actually not that many changes, but the Lions did make some new hirings, and I thought we'd go through that in today's video. So let's get it started. Hey up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before... Before long, where are they going to be the last one standing? Welcome everybody to my video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, the Lions have announced their personnel staff going forward for the first year, Brad Holmes. And you know, there's usually a lot of changes. Brad Holmes didn't make that many changes though. A lot of people that were working in the front office are still here for the Detroit Lions. And I love the answer that Brad Holmes gave for that. Basically, he said, look, I've always had an opportunity. Everywhere I've been, I've always had an opportunity to be evaluated. I want to make sure that when I came in here, I want to give everybody the opportunity to be evaluated. He said, some of these people, I knew them, some I didn't know. But the Lions have kept a lot of people over from the last front office, which is pretty cool because I you know, I feel like that does happen. You come in, it's, it's your team now, and you just start firing people because you have certain guys that you want to go get. You want to go get someone that you know. You don't know these people, so you really don't give them a shot. But... Brad Holmes did. Now, there were some moves that he made, of course. You know, he brought in some new people to the front office, created a department. But for the most part, he kept a lot of people over, which I think is really cool. And he says he feels good about this staff going forward. He gave them all an opportunity to see what they did throughout the draft. And it must have went pretty well because, like I said, they kept a lot of people around. I thought we'd start with the major moves first in the Detroit Lions personnel staff. And then we'll go into some of the smaller hirings. And I'll show you a list of the entire personnel staff. But let's start off with some of the major additions first. The biggest one that we have to talk about first has to be Mike Martin, okay? The addition of Mike Martin to the Detroit Lions personnel staff. Now, for months, we thought that Mike Martin was going to be part of the Detroit Lions, but we only heard rumors. We never got the official word, yes, he is with the Detroit Lions. And I don't know how long he's been here. I'm assuming it wasn't like he was hired today because it came official today. I'm assuming he was here before that. I don't know how long, but this is definitely the biggest one. Mike Martin has been a scout in the league for 18 years, so he, he's been around the block a few times. But you can go back with the Houston Texans, and he was credited with doing some big things. But unfortunately, they cleaned house in Houston, and he got fired, which is kind of what Brad Holmes didn't do. That's why it's important not to do that, because he might lose out on a guy like Mike Martin, or as Mike Town would say, young Kanye West. You don't want to lose out on young Kanye West. I mean, what? come on, man. I mean, I'm sure he raps good. So, young Kanye West was with the Carolina Panthers, and then, of course, when Brad Holmes got the job, he went out and he went to go get his guy, Mike Martin. Now, now, uh, young Kanye West, I guess, Mike Tomlin and Raheem Morris, we know both of those names, Raheem Morris from the Atlanta Falcons, both called him that because of his work ethic, tireless work ethic. Okay, that's good. Hey, I rock with that, young Kanye West. It's hired back in 2006 by Rick Smith, and we've heard that name as well when we were talking about the Detroit Lions GM search. Yeah, he's been, he's been around some big names, that's for sure. But in his time with Houston, I mean, he did some big things. He was credited for pounding the table for left tackle Dwayne Brown in the first round, saying that, hey, this could be our future at left tackle, and they took Dwayne Brown, and it worked out really well for them. Years ago, Dwayne Brown was traded to the Seattle Seahawks from the Houston Texans, but at 35 years old last season, and he only allowed two sacks, played over a thousand snaps at that tackle position. He graded out incredibly well. So I would say it worked out pretty well as a 26 pick in the first round. Now, Sewell, I don't think was as difficult because it was like, it's Penny Sewell. 26, a little bit tougher, but hopefully we get a stud at tackle too. Hopefully, hopefully that works out. Also, finding two UDFA studs. Now, I was wondering whether or not he was part of the staff when we were signing UDFAs. I'm not sure if he was or not, but hopefully he was because he's found a couple of gems, absolute gems. First off, Arian Foster. We know what Arian and Foster turned into yes this was a UDFA running back that he wanted he said it's a you know it's a no-brainer you have to go get Arian Foster and we saw behind the scenes how fast that goes so they got Arian Foster that turned out pretty well I would say he had the longest career but he peaked early this guy had 1600 yards this is a couple years into his career and he had like four th seasons with well over a thousand yards rushing so he was definitely a monster when he was at the top of his game and also AJ Boye was another UDFA that at one point in the NFL was the the highest paid cornerback in the league. Yeah, so he's made some big moves, pretty well decorated pass. Now, of course, not going to talk about the bad things, but young Kanye is part of the Lions staff, and I think that's pretty cool. So uh, I, I do like that addition. I'm happy that we finally got the official word. Yes, he is here because we've been waiting for that. That's a big addition to the Lions 
to the Lions staff. I really like that addition. Another big one has to be Corzine. He joined the Arizona Cardinals from what I can tell back in 2005. But before that, he was with UConn. And I guess Utah, UConn football program just basically took off. He joined the Arizona Cardinals. 2005, I believe, he joined the Arizona Cardinals. He was a scout there in 2011. His job title for the Lions is a senior advisor of player personnel operations and strategic initiatives. Strategic initiatives. Oh, okay. All right. I see. He's kept a lot of people around that were here with the last regime that really Bob Quinn brought in. And there are some big names. And I thought we'd go through those. Of course, we have John Dorsey, who's a senior personnel executive. We know about him. Dave Sears. Dave Sears is one of those guys that Brad Holmes talked about a lot. If you guys remember throughout this offseason, he's talking about Dave Sears and the work that he did. He joined the Lions back in 2007. So he's been part of this staff for a very long time. Of course, Lance Newmark, who is the director of player personnel, he apparently turned down an opportunity to go work with Carolina Panthers. I don't know what the job was. Maybe it was step up. Maybe it wasn't. I'm not completely sure, but he turned that down to stay with the Lions and stay with Brad Holmes. Like that's a big deal. I feel like you have a new general manager and he turned it down to stay here. That's pretty awesome. Also, Ray Agnew, who is the assistant GM. Now he brought Ray Agnew with him from the LA Rams, but he is the assistant general manager for the Detroit Lions. He was a former NFL player. He played in the, the defensive line for 11 seasons in the NFL. Rob Lowman is still here, director of pro scouting, which from what I can understand, the director of pro scouting is more involved in free agency, not really the draft. It's about free agency transactions there. I don't know what it is, but to me, Rob Lowman looks like the dude that has the best knock-knock jokes in the world. Like, I feel like this dude could crack you up. So I'm just saying, that's probably, I mean, he doesn't have to say it. You know, that's not really a job title. Hey, he makes me laugh. But I, I feel like it's part of it. Around for 15 seasons, and in 2019, he was promoted to the director of pro scouting. He was promoted by Bob Quinn. There was a lot of guys like that, but Brad Holmes kept a lot of these people around. He gave him an opportunity. Ryan Hudspeth, who has been with the Detroit Lions since 2018, apparently since he joined, before he joined the Detroit Lions, he was working with Tampa Bay, specifically focusing on scouting the southern part of the United States, like overlooking that. Uh, they kind of break into sections, like you have your area scouts, you know, they have a certain area. We have Mark Olson, who joined back in 2016, and uh, prior to joining the Detroit Lions, he was with the Atlanta Falcons for 18 years, where he was a scout there. So a lot of scouts. You have some big names in here. Mike Martin, John Dorsey, the professional gum chewer. Yeah. I think that's one way to definitely build trust is that when you come in, you're not firing everybody. It's one way to build trust around the room. And uh, that's another good culture builder is to say, okay, everybody's going to get a chance. I'm not just going to come in here and start cleaning house. You don't really want that environment. It's like, hey, everybody's got an opportunity. We're going to see what you can do. And uh, if, I guess if I like you, you're going you're gonna to stay with me. So we have some smaller moves that I do want to touch on. And I think this one's really interesting. So I want to get into this. We had some promotions. Jordan Martin was promoted from a scouting assistant, area scout. So it seems like the newcomers are scouting assistants. So he went from from scouting his kiss it to an area scout so i'm assuming he's focused on a specific area in the united states to scout but this one's kind of cool dakota duncan went from scouting assistant to a blesto scout now what the heck is blesto that's what i was trying to figure out like, i've never heard of that in my life this is actually really interesting so blesto is like a scouting program that's been around for over 40 years but if you didn't know blesto was actually created and the name comes from bears lion Steelers, talent blessed oh I, I guess. I don't know. I've never, now, most teams are a part of this now, but it was founded like the Detroit Lions were one of the original founders of Blesto. I thought that was kind of cool. That's basically in the scouting department. You're always looking ahead to next year. So I'm pretty sure right now, if I'm correct, Dakota Duncan is looking ahead to next year's draft and he's scouting for next year and he's getting prepared for next year's pro days, next year's combines already. So they're always a year ahead. So that's pretty cool. I've never heard of Blesto before. Newcomers for the Detroit Lions. So they had a couple of those. You know, they added some people. And also, Brad Holmes created a a player wellness division. So this is where they have some doctors working. Doctor, Dr. Michelle Gavin is working here with mental skills, mental skills specialist in this player wellness division. They also have Jessica Gray and Sean Pugh. Assuming not everybody uses this kind of division for every NFL team because the Lions just added this, but I know it's for spiritual, emotional, it's financial help. It's help for a lot of different things for these players. Probably just keep mentally right, you know, keep mentally healthy because there is a lot going on. And I'm pretty sure the NBA also so has this for players, but I think it's just certain teams have it and some teams probably don't. I don't know who all has it, but I guess the Lions didn't have it before. You can see how something like this could be very beneficial to a rookie, you know, who's coming into the league. There's probably a lot of stuff going on. Maybe they deal with injuries, their first time getting paid, or certain free agents that are really trying to bounce back and get back at this. So this is a cool department that the Lions would add. The kind of environment that Brad Holmes is trying to instill that they're going to have these options for players. You have a player wellness division that was created by Brad Holmes. That's pretty awesome. Player wellness divisions. Lions uh, have, have made 
made some changes here. A new player player wellness division, some big additions, uh, some new pieces. But I think the biggest thing you take from this is that that's just who Brad Holmes is. Brad Holmes isn't the type of guy to come in and say, I'm just going to blow it all up. This is my team. This is how we're doing it. Like, let's change this. Like, he's coming in and saying, okay, you know, let's, let's just see. And it's good for those people that are working here because they get an opportunity. You know, you're the thinking, oh, gosh, new coaching staff, I'm going to get fired, just like Mike Martin. But no, wait, you got an opportunity. Let's just see how you work. Let's go through this draft. Let's see how it goes. And if I like you, I'll keep you around. And he kept a lot of big names around. This is kind of like what we talked about. This is the same approach that you're taking to the front office that you take to the players as well. You don't just have this for one specific group. Like, this is how we treat our players. You treat everybody like this with an opportunity. It's an opportunity for Jared Goff to get another chance. It's an opportunity for a lot of one-year deal guys to get another chance. We're all takeaway from this whole situation is that it's just about opportunity, fair opportunity. You know, hey, if I don't like you, I ain't going to keep you, but I'm going to give you a chance. I don't even know who this is. Why would I come in and just blow it all up? You know, you can't really build. It's tough to build a good culture when you do things like that. Maybe a little bit of that with their last regime where they came in and they kind of blew it all up. They're like, hey, let's go get our guys. And I, I guess that's okay, but it didn't work. This is a little more welcoming. Everybody's got an opportunity and we're just going to see what happens. Rob Lohman, I mean, he interviewed for the Detroit Lions general manager job. So I just think that's pretty cool. It seems like there's a good relationship there for him to be here with Bob Quinn interview for the Detroit Lions general manager job and he is still here with the Detroit Lions now working for a guy like Brad Holmes he could have came in and fired him like oh you work for you you, you try to interview for the job like get him out of here nope I'm, I'm gonna keep him around he added his pieces he had his Ray Agnews he had his John Dorsey the rest of the uh staff department if you guys were interested in any of these I don't think there's any other major ones we have touched on some of these is hard to find information like I try but some of you really can't find anything on these people you have to look at like their LinkedIn account and then they're like hey I went to Miami University I'm like all right that's cool but I don't really have much to share with that. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm just happy we got Mike Martin. Hopefully, he finds us a UDFA gem. He may have. He may, I mean, we already went through UDFA. Maybe we found a gem. Let me know your thoughts, guys, below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.